Recap in minutes. Today we will be going through a war, thriller and action movie from 2022 called, Black Crab. There will be spoilers ahead in this video, so chill out and enjoy. The movie begins showing a woman, Caroline Ede, and her daughter, Vanya, waiting in their car in the tunnel. There was a huge traffic block due to some unknown reasons. Meanwhile, they hear news of civil unrest and hundreds of casualties in the country. When her daughter asks her what they are talking about, she changes the station. Now she sees some people running for their lives as they hear the sounds of gunfires. Suddenly a man gets shot in front of their car, this panics Vanya but her mother catches her, hides her under her scarf, and asks her to remain silent. Eventually, some gunmen come to their car and snatch her daughter. After some time, Caroline comes to a stop on the train, where a sergeant calls her name and asks her to step out. She tells him that it is not her stop but he shows him the new orders. Now he tells her that they will pick her up along with others tomorrow. A lieutenant, Neeland, comes in his military vehicle and takes her with him. On their way to the base, he asks her about her family, education, and past. She tells him about everything before the civil war. After some time on the road, he stops among the refugees' tents, asks her not to step out of the car, and leaves to take something for him. When he does not come back, Caroline comes out of the car to see him, but some refugees attack her to take her vehicle. She kills them one by one and gets her Humvee out from there successfully. In the next scene, she reaches the base where she was ordered to prove her identity to them. After the verification, they take her to the other volunteers in the room. When Kareem, Malik, and Granvik were sharing their stories, Captain Forsberg comes there and takes them to Colonel Rod. The Colonel welcomes them, asks them to sit, and orders the Captain to start briefing the mission to them. She starts by showing them the infiltration of the rebels in their cities and the loss of the Swedish bases. She warns them that the enemy will reach them in a few days. The Colonel interrupts and says they are about to lose the civil war unless they accomplish a special covert mission, something that can change everything and end the war. Now he gets up and informs them that the whole archipelago is covered in ice for the first time in 37 years. He tells them that they cannot move a vehicle on this ice, and it is also too thick for a boat to push through it. He continued by saying that it could support a soldier on ice skates, and that's why they have been summoned there. He alerts them, informing them that he is going to assign them a mission to transport two capsules across the ice, from Tessany to the research facility in Odo. He names this mission Black Crab, like the crab in the dark. In the end, Caroline raises her concern saying that a hundred nautical miles on skates over saltwater ice, in the dark behind the enemy lines is a suicide mission. The colonel reminds her that this mission is not a request but an order. The colonel orders everyone to leave the conference room except Caroline. He tells her that she is right but they want them to do the job. Now he shows her a picture of her daughter, and tells her that she is in a refugee camp near enemy borders in Odo. Caroline controls her emotions and tells him that she will do her best to complete the mission and reach Odo. She takes her photo and leaves the room. The next moment, Captain Forsberg comes to them and gives them the bags full of necessary things for their mission. She tells them that they will be out of the base for the mission before dusk. But in the middle of the night, the enemy attack their base. They ready their gear in the given two minutes and get out with the captain. They escape their attack, explosion, and gunfire, and cross the ridge. There they meet the colonel again and Caroline gets shocked seeing Lieutenant Neeland. Colonel Rod gives them the capsules and tells them to take extreme care of them. He orders them to secure them and take them to the research facility in Odo. After that, he makes Captain Forsberg the commander of the mission and orders them to go. They spend their night skating on the ice and take a short break in the morning. Forsberg orders them to wait for the dark to skate further. Meanwhile, the ice breaks and Forsberg falls into it. Caroline watches everyone trying their things to save her but she jumps herself to rescue her. When she reaches her, she finds her dead. She takes the capsules and gets out of the water. They decide to move from there and eventually, they find a house on a tiny island. They take Caroline there to prevent her from getting hypothermia, and make Neelan their new commander of the mission. Caroline objects to this decision saying that he was not present in the colonel's briefing, he does not know anything about the mission so she will not accept him as her new command. He suspects her in retaliation saying that she did not save Forsberg and let her die in the water. Now another group member, Malik, stops them and tells them that they have to complete the mission without fighting each other. After some time, Caroline wakes up listening to the voices of the radio. She comes out and sees Karimi making contact with someone on the radio. Granvik tells them that a helicopter is coming toward them, so they rush to wake the others. They take their luggage and capsules and get out of the house. When the chopper bombs the house, Caroline suspects Karimi and holds her gun at him. She tells them that he was communicating with someone before the chopper came. 
The group suspects him to be a traitor but he innocently claims that he was trying to contact his girlfriend, who is a communication officer at a base that was recently bombed. The group is convinced but still removes Karimi guns from him for safety reasons. Lieutenant Neeland orders them to take him with them without any weapon. After that, they move from there and continue skating on the lake. At night, they get shocked to see a number of dead bodies in the frozen lake. When they turn on their torch, a chopper locates them and opens fire at them. They run in different directions to find shelter. Somehow they manage to escape the chopper's attack and decide to go further through the land. After some time, they found a warehouse in the street and went inside. They meet an older couple there who offers them fresh food. When they sat to eat at the table, a spoon fell on the ground. When Caroline gets down to pick it up, she sees a machine gun fixed under the table. Now the old man opens fire at them, which hits Malik and kills Karimi. They also kill the couple and get out of their home and again skate on the lake. After some time on the lake, they reach an abandoned ship. They get inside to take some rest. Meanwhile, Granvik opens the capsule and they all get shocked to see a biological weapon inside of it. Caroline tells him that it is a virus that can destroy everything on Earth. Malik tells them to leave him and check the ship. There they discover that Malik's wound is worse than he suspected. Caroline comes to the deck, sees a distant light, and hears a gunshot. She rushes back and Granvik tells her that he shot himself. She tells them that they have to move as she saw a light coming at them. They tell her that they will not leave Malik alone there. Now she comes out from there alone and skates on the ice to reach Odo. Soon she reaches an area of very thin ice that cracks under her. She slips there and struggles to get up but could not. Meanwhile, Neeland and Granvik reach there and Neeland asks him to give him the capsules. She requests him to throw her the rope so she can come back. When she gives them the capsule, they throw the rope at her. They pull her back and tie the ropes with one another to avoid falling into the river. After some time, Granvik falls and they all lie down to pull him from the cracks. Suddenly, the enemy starts firing at them while they crawl to avoid the shots. Lieutenant Neeland asks Granvik to snipe the shooters from there. When he kills the shooter, Caroline skates forward to their base on the island. When she reaches their military post, she realizes that the shooter was the last one alive and the remaining people have already frozen to death in the pillbox. Now they all reach the post and rest there for the night. The next morning, Caroline wakes up and gets shocked when she does not see Neelan there. She searches his bag and does not find the capsule there. She comes out of the post to spot Neeland but someone shoots at her. She rushes back and wakes up Granvik to run from there. Before she can decide what to do, she and Granvik are ambushed by a large number of enemies. They succeed in disposing of most of them but tragedy soon strikes. They get the positions to kill the enemy soldiers. Intense firing ensues at them. After some time, a soldier comes behind them and shoots Caroline who was about to throw the grenade at them. When she gets hit, the grenade falls back near their pit. Granvik tries to pick up the grenade but it explodes with him. And somehow Caroline manages to kill all the soldiers and get herself up to skate again. After some time, she spots Neeland on the ice and calls him to stop. When he does not stop, she shoots him and takes the capsule. He yells at her and says it is a very dangerous virus so we have to throw them into the ocean. He tells her that when the virus spreads with the refugee flows, millions of people will die while Colonel Rod and the others will hide away in their bunkers. He continued by saying that it is not the weapon against the enemy, it is against them all. She does not listen to him and moves from there. After walking on the ice for some time, she reaches a point near an island and begins to faint. Eventually, she runs into people on horseback who utter the word black to her. She replies crab before passing out. In the next scene, Caroline wakes up in a hospital and is told by the doctor that her wound was severe, and they had to amputate a few of her toes but she'll survive. She is then told to meet the commanding officer. Admiral Nord, who promotes her as second lieutenant and awards her with two medals. She however is concerned with meeting her daughter who the admiral reveals was a farce to motivate her for the mission. Vanya was never at Odo. This news enrages Caroline who attacks her but since she is now a war hero, they just restrain her. Not knowing her next course of action, she seeks out Neeland and urges him to help her destroy the virus. They conclude that the government wants to use refugees to spread the virus, which will trigger mass genocide as the higher-ups wait for the world to reset in secret bunkers. Neeland is hesitant expressing that it is too late, but Caroline convinces him that their war hero status will let them infiltrate the lab and steal the virus. In the next scene, they go ahead and enter the lab, triggering alarms and killing people along the way. The scientists there tell them that they need to get the vials away from the people, before destroying them or else everyone will get infected regardless. They put on hazmat suits to sneak out of the lab to get onto a helicopter to escape. As Neelan secures their escape, Caroline stitches open, making it evident that she is severely wounded. 
She then urges Neelan to escape. To make things worse, the commanding officer Admiral Nord narrows in on her, and they draw the weapons. Caroline reveals to them that she's got grenades wired to the virus and will blow it. This is when her superior confirms her suspicion about the use of the virus, and begs her to consider the fate of her daughter. She replies that that's exactly what she is doing and jumps off the edge of the base, setting off the grenades. Neelan watches her sacrifice herself as the virus is disposed of safely. The movie ends with Caroline reuniting with her daughter in the deep sea and hugging her. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe recap in minutes for more videos like this and help the channel grow.